Tim Brando in New York. The season premiere of NCAA basketball about to get going. Keith Bogans, the leading scorer for Kentucky, prepares for action. Coming up, the premiere of NCAA basketball on CBS. After this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Autotrader.com, the biggest, best used car site on the planet. The Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. And by Prudential, your rock-solid choice for insurance, investments, real estate, and financial services. On behalf of all the men and women of CBS Sports, welcome to this, our 20th year on the road to the Final Four, our season premiere, and what a way to get it started. The two winningest programs in the history of college basketball, Kentucky and North Carolina. The road to the Final Four, and it'll all conclude, Billy, four months from tonight in Minneapolis. Great to be back with you, and what a start to our campaign. Well, it is, Jim. We've got two great programs, but they both have reasons to struggle here early in the season. Let's see how it develops today. The lineups, Prince Stone, Parker, who thought he was going to North Carolina. He'll start in the post for the Wildcats. Bogans and Smith in the backcourt. Lang, Capel, Haywood, the seven-foot senior for the Tar Heels with Forte and freshman Adam Boone in the backcourt for North Carolina. Mike Wood, along with Shaw and Hess, are the officials. And we're underway for only the 23rd time ever, Kentucky and North Carolina. North Carolina with a big lead there, Jim. 16 to 6. You would have never believed that, considering these great programs. What a tip in. It looks like Forte gets the opening basket. Excellent rebounding guard is Forte. Both on the offensive end as well as defensively. Stone out high for the Cats who have struggled early. And a hand check outside called against the Tar Heels. Capel. Kentucky with a 1 and 3 record. And here is Matt Doherty in his first season as the head basketball coach at North Carolina. His team off to a 3-1 and one start. He is a Dean Smith disciple, played on the championship team in 82 here. Jimmy did something today I've never seen a head coach do. When his team got in the layup line, came out on the floor, he was out there in the layup line with him with his entire staff. I've never seen a coach do that before, so not exactly everything that Dean Smith did did Doherty cop. Inside, good denial. Parker, Parker and last nice touch by Kentucky. Tubby Smith and his Kentucky Cats. The lone win over Jacksonville State. Close losses to St. John's, UCLA in overtime, and Penn State. Despite their horrible shooting, Jim, they could have very easily won two games in New York City instead of dropping two. They had that St. John's game wrapped up. The free throw shooting has been abysmal. Oh, it has. Including 9 out of 20 in that loss to St. John's. And they're 26% from threes. Not what you'd expect from Kentucky team. Straight man-to-man -man coverage, and look at double-teaming down inside on Awood. So over the top. Still get it in there. Triple team kicks it back out. Capel with a three. Lang trying to reach. No call over the back. Good outlet pass by Stone. Bogans will fire a three, and Kentucky over two. The lead talked about there. And it is 12 straight miss from three-point line. That's uh, something that they're really going to have to improve. Bounce it inside to Lang. Good move and one. Coming off his career high 22 and a loss to Michigan State earlier this week. And Parker got hit in the eye on that particular play, Jim. This is a young man that's uh, almost was a storied player here at North Carolina. Lang uses him right here. Both young men from the state of North Carolina. Lang goes right around him. Not good defense by Parker on that play. Lang coming off the best game of his career up at Michigan State. He had 22, but the Spartans beat Carolina. Tar Heels wins over Winthrop, Tulsa, and Appalachian State. And the loss to Michigan State, 3-1 and one overall. Versus 1-3 and three Kentucky. Tacking on the inside. Nice move by Stone. Nothing there. Good help. Estill, number 50, in for Kentucky. Smith with a three. Ooh, passes twice, including off the top of the backboard, cleared by Lang. Good job by Capel getting down floor, beating the break. Capel with two more, 6-0 Tar Heels. Here's where Saul Smith has to pull things back out and get his team in the offensive structure. He doesn't do it, Boone turns him over. Right off his hip. 
Saul had no place to go that time, Jim. I mean, he's a situation where North Carolina was back on defense very nicely. Saul need to pull that back out. Now Manning, one-on-one -on -one Adam Boone, freshman point guard from Minneapolis, the final four city of this season. Now this is going to be the position with Ed Coda no longer here, the great four-year leader that they had, led the ACC in assists for four straight years. He's not here. And North Carolina's going to have to figure out who will that point guard be. Little zone action by Kentucky. Forte too strong. Good rebound by Bogans. Well, former high school teammates. One shoots, the other rebounds, but they're on different teams now. Forte and Bogans from DeMatha in the D.C. area. Esto back in the mid. Looking for help, but almost stolen away by Forte. Boy, the little half hook would have been there. He had Awood right where he wanted it. Looks away, gets it back. There's Forte, and I said he's an outstanding rebounder. Came back to help. Bogan's cut off middle. Stop the penetration. Forte had 38 in the dome here. They broke the all-time record for scoring in a dome against Tulsa. Lang will go to the line for two. That was the last game here, Billy. Yep. Got some rules changes we should get everybody up to speed on. Well, this Lang, year, Lang down, Jim, before we get into that. Lang down, a young man who had a, all kinds of problems last year injury-wise. Close the changes on a three-point shot. They can challenge, but if you challenge and you're wrong, you lose a timeout. Six players on the line, as we'll see right now, to kind of clean up action. But more importantly than any rule changes is the point of emphasis. Eliminating rough play, not only in the post area, but all over the floor. And I think everybody's on the same page with that one. Coaches, administrators players and certainly the referees. Lang grimacing but uh, to the line for two. He did have an injury plague and uh, also fought off a virus during last season. He really did. He lost a lot of weight. He never had himself in shape. You can just look at him right now. He's really built himself back up. And this is a young guy that should be one of the best power forward type players in college basketball this season. Kentucky brings in Eric Daniels, number 14, a freshman, and number three, J.P. Blevins. And a sub also in for the Tar Heels. It's another freshman guard, Morrison, Brian Morrison. Now look at the situation for Tubby Smith. He's got Blevins playing a point, moves Saul over to a number two spot. Makes him a little smaller. You can see that Tubby Smith is really trying to find the combination. It's early in the season, and he doesn't have it yet. Esto gets Kentucky's first points. Took him three minutes and 28 seconds. Morrison, an explosive athlete. Stripped away by Esto. Smith, one on two, will pull it out. Nice idea. Delayed break available. And Capel comes out with it. Boy, some sloppy passing by North Carolina. Morrison, who got in there, and then Capel just throwing it away with a one-hand throw. Levin's got a hand on it, really, to knock it away, to force the turnover. Here's Blevins. He'll take the three. Up in there, and Kentucky's rolls from three. I think the ball was touched, but they're going to call it an air ball. They're 0 for 5, Billy, from three-point land. Early advantage to North Carolina here at Chapel Hill. And there's the much-touted freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, Kentucky's Jason Parker, who was Carolina-bound until ruled academically ineligible in mid-August, and then landed at Kentucky after they found, after searching through some of his grades and documents, they were able to find a way to get him in. Jim, in, in a way, it was very unfortunate for the young man. He originally attended North Mecklenburg High School, transferred to West Charlotte, was never given credit for three courses that were advanced placement, which would have made his GPA a 2.5 instead of a 2 and therefore he would have qualified with a college board score that he had and would not have had to make that over thousands board score so in any case he's at Kentucky which is not all bad but he's not playing at the school which was his original choice Haywood's pass tipped out to that sliding scale with the GPA and the board scores and to Kentucky's credit as we watch Forte knock down a three Kentucky discovered the error in the GPA calculation and uh, he's uh, a wildcat and quite a find that was a great pass ahead by Morrison. He knew he was going to pass it when he caught the ball. That's what made the play. Oh, and there's Parker. I, I want a little postscript to Parker. In the Kentucky Guide, it asked him what schools he considered before he chose Kentucky. He said, Cincinnati, Michigan, 
Charlotte, Wake Forest. He never mentioned North Carolina. So once they were out of sight, they were out of mind. And something else interesting, I read an article about him last year, and he said, this is when he thought he was going to North Carolina. He said he wanted to go there because he wanted his name up on that wall of jerseys up there. And he said, I'll have to do it quickly because I'll only be there for one year. Well, that, so that, how, how does that statement sit? That's, again, the dilemma you talk about that it's so troubling right now if you're a major college program. Does a guy for one year really help you? That's right. And here you see Kentucky in the 2-3 zone. They've shown that a couple of times. Matching up down on the inside. Good skip pass. Morrison. Boy, quick move. Haywood puts it back up and in. Morrison didn't hit that one. This is a young man that I think, based on watching him practice and play so far, because of his athleticism, when he learns the system, he's going to be special. Estel, beautiful pass there, Billy, from Eric Daniels. It's nice to have a 6'7 man throw that skip pass over the top. Another skip pass. Rute slicing into the basket. Haywood over the back of Parker. Called on Haywood. Good block out by Parker. Giving up a lot of size there. They list him at 6'8". I don't really know if he's that tall. Mind you, a little bit of Elton Brand size-wise, doesn't he? There's the alley-oop, skip pass right over the top. Nobody on the weak side to help, but even though Morrison has great leaping ability, he's uh, no match down inside for the likes of Parker. There's North Carolina in their zone. Basically, mirror image of what uh, Kentucky's doing. A little point zone here by North Carolina. Good pass. Hawkins, and inside they went, and Parker unable to convert. How about that anticipation by Forte, realizing where that ball was going to go? And there is the point of emphasis. And there's the second call against Haywood. They're not going to allow this year that type of backing in, whether it be in the low post or whether it be hand-checking outside. So the players will have to adapt. Tayshawn Prince returns for Kentucky, in for Daniels. Hawkins in, so you can see Tubby Smith. The confidence he has as a coach, he is trying to find combinations. You'd say, well, this is not the game to find it, but you know, with Kentucky's schedule, you don't have a lot of room to go ahead and try to have some easy games. There's the North Carolina packing that zone in again. Here's Hawkins. Steps in for two. Freshman from Dumfries, Virginia. One of three lefties. Set the all-time assist record at Oak Hill. Beat the likes of Jeff McGinnis, who was a great guard here at, uh, at the University of North Carolina. Let's look at this zone, see if North Carolina puts somebody on the foul line, just as Kentucky is. Brian Burstecker in for the Tar Heels, number 50. He goes push. up for the rebound, and he had a wildcat on his back. Yeah, Prince on an easy push, easy to spot. When you talk about consecutive NCAA tournament appearances, North Carolina 26 and counting. Well, and you would envision, with the exception of Indiana, off to a very slow start right now and struggling that three of those four anyway look like they'd be locks for NCAA tournament to continue that streak. And there's the lob over the zone. Morrison to Lang. Both teams going over the top of the skip passes against the zone. 14-8, Tar Heels. North Carolina really matching up with their zone now. Hawkins left open. And that's the first three to drop for Kentucky. One for six now. Shows a lot of confidence coming right off of that bench. Lighten it up. They have three left-handers on his team. Very unusual. Morrison left open. He shoots right over Prince for two. He has an excellent vertical leap, so when he gets down inside, he's not afraid to go up in the air. And away from the ball, establishing position down low. Parker called for his second. Same call we saw on the other end of the floor. There's the loop. Lob pass right over the top of the zone. Good job by Morrison. Lang right there to catch and put it away. I think Morrison could be a special player, Jim. He, yeah. he showed us yesterday that he can explode. He's got a great vertical leap. Young man from uh, Washington, state of Washington. Redmond, Washington, and really kind of got uh, a little bit steered in this direction by playing for an AAU team coached by former Tar Heel George Carl. Christopher had to catch that with two hands. Carl, of course, coaching on the 
top level there at that time. Brent's way out with a three. That's four case, four rebound, I believe. Four indeed. Both teams happy to stay in that zone. Lang back in the mid. Late call, but Stone got him. Good move by Lang. You can see, Jim, how much more aggressive he is this year than last, where he really did suffer from all kinds of problems. Well, we talked about this being some uh, superb matchup to start the season here for us at CBS. The two winningest programs in history, Kentucky, North Carolina. Kentucky with four more NCAA titles than North Carolina, but not the one-on-one -on -one matchup advantage. No, they really don't. And it's kind of interesting against those other quality opponents. North Carolina has a winning record against everybody in that group other than St. John's. Kentucky, of course, has a losing record against North Carolina. Carolina 16-6 and six against Kentucky all-time, including six straight wins. There's Hawkins again firing. North Carolina back to the man-to-man -man that time. Prince with a nice offensive rebound. Too strong and saved by first sticker. Morrison again. Now watch this young man explode. Well, Hawkins comes after him. They got him for the reach in. And what is going to be the key here for Matt Doherty in regard to this Morrison decision is when does he feel the young man has the leadership qualities to take this club over? Jim Nance and Billy Packer back in Chapel Hill. Billy, let's take a look at your sweet 16. Here it is, folks. Jim, Write I'm them down. I'm never right, so I might as well try again this year. Duke, Arizona, Michigan State, and Kansas. That pretty strong group, and maybe as strong a four teams starting a season we've had in a long time. Illinois, I know they've had two losses, but I like their team. Stanford, Tennessee, Seton Hall, Tommy Amaker has got it going there. Let's take some outside shots. North Carolina, UCLA, Utah, Maryland. Although they're struggling, you got to figure with their talent, they're coming back. Some long shots, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Wake Forest, and Florida. I'll tell you, there's 16 pretty good basketball teams right there. One thing about this season, the returning talent at the major, in the major programs, is the best we've seen in a long time. I would really. agree completely. There's that 2-3 zone again by Kentucky. Passes over the top, and the skip passes have been effective. Here's Morrison from the wing, three. Oh, Hawkins with the quick hands. Oh, Hawkins has had himself in the action, too. Daniels, no place to go. Good job by Morrison, just holding his ground, drawing the charge. You're right about Hawkins, though. He can certainly bring some excitement and some energy to that Kentucky lineup. So that call against Daniels with the charge. Kentucky with a three-quarter court press coming. Got a 2-2-1 full court zone pressure. Let's see if they can get a trap started. Good job by Capel, recognizing where the trap was coming from and shooting it down with a good bounce pass. You can see Morrison can really explode down in the seams of the zone. Capel with a sweet three. Excellent outside shooter, has uh, struggled a little bit this year with his shooting but was one of the premier foul shooters the last two years in the Atlantic Coast Conference, so you expect that to come back. Daniels. Soft lefty, and there's Lang. No blocking out. No aggressive weak side action by Kentucky in the rebound. Daniels. Oh, nice. And his burst sticker has it blocked. Daniels on some kind of start to the season shooting the ball before that miss. The 13, 13 out, of 14. out of 14, Jim. That's not bad. I don't care if you're shooting all layups, which he hasn't been. He's got a nice soft touch, medium range jump shot. Four out of five from three before that last miss. Kentucky using a lot of people. Look out. Back to Lang. Second time. That combo has clicked. They're setting a pick on the back man on the zone, and Lang's coming in behind it. Morrison right on the money with those passes. Lang with seven. Tar Heels with a double-digit lead. And you can see Kentucky really struggling to find somebody that'll put the ball in his hands and get things slowed down here. Fitch, who has just entered the game. Gerald Fitch. It's hard to ask a freshman to be that man. Bouncing it inside to Estel on a whistle on North Carolina. How about Morrison and Lang? Beautiful pass, and look at Jim, the nice rotation on that ball so that it makes it easy to catch. It's really a key. You want to throw it up there soft. You can see where Lang had got the screen from Capel against the zone. The fans love Morrison as he comes out. 
Boone back into the game, another freshman. So Boone, who had started the game, returns to the lineup. Morrison with a breather. Tough pass, pulled down by Smith. North Carolina into man-to-man -man now. Showing zone and man-to-man. -man. Kentucky played mostly zone so far. Bogans. Esco wasn't ready. Lucky to get it back to Bogans. Three-second call. For up to the minute scores on all of today's NCAA Hoops action, click on Live Scores at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, keyword CBS Sports Line. And here you have the 2-2-1 full court press again. Let's see what Boone does as opposed to Morrison against him. Capable of good passing. Morrison in the lineup, the lead went from 5 to 10. Nice screening by Lane on the outside, Lang on the outside. Good seal. The pass deflected. Deflected by Daniels. Here comes Kentucky. Tipped away by Boone. That stopped the, the break. Fitch, open three. Can't get a better look than that. Push off underneath. Jim, you know who I think taught Fitch how to shoot? You did. You know why? He's got that left. glide to the left on hey, a jump shot. You haven't seen my shot this well, year. Well, I, I, I don't want to see it anymore, and I don't want to see Fitch shoot that shot anymore like that. You can't shoot a straightaway jumper if you're going to glide to the left on the shot. You don't want to see it again when I take you out again on that game of horse. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Billy with the, the old two-handed set shot. Your strength. All right, burst sticker whistle with that one. Lang before called for a foul. Kentucky's been scoreless the last three and a half minutes. A 7-0 run by the Tar Heels that Bogans would like to end right now. As uncertain as this Kentucky team is about themselves right now, if they had shot better from the free throw line, they would have probably two more wins. They're shooting 56% as a team, and they have no one of the starting rotation over 70%. And that is really unusual. Hard to believe. Michael Brooker in for North Carolina, number 11. They're only 5 for 15. Kentucky in the loss to Penn State. Yeah. Saves it to the man who just came in, Brooker. As the Crispin brothers put on a show offensively against Kentucky in that game. Dangerous pass. Three-second violation. North Carolina. About some of the new coaches, the new horizon in the game this season. Well, they might be new in the case of three of those four, though. They've had head coaching experience. Great to have John Calipari back in uh, college basketball. You know that he's going to have an outstanding program at Memphis. Daniel, a good move around first sticker. You saw Bill Self at Illinois. He took Tulsa to the regional final against North Carolina last year. Boone, no place to go. Got too far down there against the zone. We have Forte on Bogans, two young guys that played at the Matha High School under the great Morgan Wooten going head to head against each other. Of course, Morgan Wooten had a backcourt with a guy named Sidney Lowe and Derek Wittenberg one time that went on to go to college for the same school and end up at a national championship backcourt at NC State. 1983. Thanks for reminding me of Houston graduate. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, Saul has to throw it up there with no time remaining. Yeah, had a Good rebound. rebound on the shot clock, and Estel follows it up. Great presence by Estel. Estel, who has dropped 50 pounds from his high school playing days. You can see that this young fella is going to be outstanding. Was sat out last year with knee problems and was a partial qualifier, which should be a real factor. He's made all three of his shots from the field. Kentucky with a five-point run. Boom, three. Shot had little arc. Well, and you know what, Jim? He was looking to pass, not shoot. Excellent pass. Daniels lays it in. What a pass from the other end. Really, that's all Smith. Have to fault North Carolina on that one. Nobody got back defensively. Boone, remember, was in the corner, so he's the guard. Off first sticker. Timeout on the floor. The Carolina 10-point lead has been trimmed to three. By Kentucky. 15 from the Kentucky bench, two from the North Carolina bench, Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and a lot of this comeback, all the comeback really, when Morrison went to the bench for North Carolina. And of course, Haywood down so that North Carolina is smaller, but Jim, you know those bench points right now for Kentucky, kind of a misnomer in this respect. 
Tubby Smith is really not settled on what is going to be the rotation on his club. It's a little bit deeper club than they, uh, than they have right now in terms of experience, but he's got to figure out who to get down on that floor to make a nice combination, and it's probably going to take him a while. Kentucky starters have made only one out of ten shots from the field. So the bench has come in with a big lift with Daniels and Estel, Hawkins mixing it up. Now we see Smith and Fitch out there. North Carolina comes out with a little half-court trap. First time they've shown that in this game. Nice job by Kentucky to handle it. Stolen away, it's Boone. Freshman on freshman, and traveling is the call against Adam Boone. No place to go. He's got guys coming behind him in a trailing position. He's got to pull that out to the side. Tonight on CBS, watch your favorite skating superstars in all new Ice Wars, the USA versus the world tonight on CBS. Boone picks up Smith, three-quarter court. Jimmy's got to learn to make those kind of decisions, and that's what Matt Doherty's looking for. Leadership, decisions, distributing the ball, playing defense, not worried about scoring from that position. Bogus looked like maybe an extra step, but he takes advantage of it. Went right around Lang, who didn't anticipate that he'd take it all the way to the hole. It's a 9 nothing run now for Kentucky. I wonder when Morrison is coming back into the game. Forte can't give him that shot. Too strong this time, though. And tipped out by Estel, they say. Hawkins comes back in for Kentucky. How about some of the early season surprises, Billy? Well, there have been so many. At the top of the list is uh, a guy who's just been such a credit to the game of basketball, Dick Bennett, who retired at Wisconsin. Always a quality person, Jim, and, and uh, we wish him the very yeah, best. We sure Oakland do. defeating Michigan. Oakland just now a Division I team in the last couple of years. Cal State Northridge over UCLA. How about Purdue? They lose a game to Central Michigan, then they beat Arizona, then they come down and get waxed by Virginia. Uh, not what you'd expect from a Gene Cady's team who's usually very consistent. Papal with the shot. Morrison has returned along with Haywood to the North Carolina lineup and uh, instantly with the subs, the dry spell ends. A 9-0 run by Kentucky ends. Back to it with uh, Haywood with the two fouls. He's playing right back in the center now in that matchup zone. Kentucky ought to try to make him guard somebody, try to pick up the third foul on him. North Carolina surely missed him when he was sitting down. Hogan's three-point shot. Kind of a tough shot selection. I think the, the toughest thing for young players on any level of basketball, moving into high school, moving to college, moving into professional, is to figure out what is a good shot. Not what you have had as a shot in the past when you might be a high school so superstar and you move up to college, but what's a good shot on this level? Well, really, when you're talking about programs like this, all of these kids dominated at the high school sure. level. So then to get it back into a team concept and then pass up that irresistible shot. There's Hay with the board and the putback. No, Haywood. Good job. line for two. Good offensive rebounding by North Carolina. They were dominated 43 to 29 on the boards by Michigan State, and that's going to happen by a lot of teams. Michigan State, not only talented, Tom Izzo has his guys playing so hard as usual, but they dominated North Carolina on the boards. Next week, look at this lineup on Saturday, Seton Hall at Illinois, and then Arizona at Connecticut. Billy will be there. Scores on campus. UConn hosting Arizona. And that Purdue-Arizona game, Jim, let's, let's uh, point out a couple of things. Lauren Woods did not play, which obviously will be a big factor for Arizona. And in addition to that, they flew all the way from Hawaii to uh, Indiana to play for that basketball game, something that uh, you know, really wonder about the scheduling. Haywood gets one of two. North Carolina lead of five, 25-20. Inside of five minutes to go, Estel. He likes it. Cuts it to two. Beautiful follow through by the big fella. He doesn't mind stepping out there and shooting that shot. He's now four for four from the field with nine points. North Carolina had a chance early in this game probably to blow this thing out. They did not get the job done. Excellent job by Kentucky to get back in it. Morrison double team tried to bounce it off Daniels, who was up to it. Hawkins can tie it, gives it up. Estel lays it in, tied at 25. Great hustle by uh, Kentucky. Three guys filling that break. You gotta like Hawkins in this game too. You know what? He's come off the bench, give him a real lift.
Kentucky staying in that zone. Lang really setting some big screens outside. Lang from outside. Not his shot at this time of the game. Kentucky could take the lead on this possession. Bogans challenges Lang. He'll go to the line for two. Good move by Bogans on the inside to take that. Here we'll see. Now what Morrison tried to do is to throw it off the legs of the Kentucky play. He wasn't successful. And here's Hawkins, who had a shot of his own, but threw it back. Esto really hustling on the break to put it in there. Look at Daniels here, Billy. Excellent. Nobody reaching for the ball to pick up the cheap foul. Very good double team by Kentucky. So Bogans will shoot two. Sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia. Kentucky leads in the one point down 10 in this half. Jim, I mentioned Morgan Wooten, uh, the incredible coach, went into the Hall of Fame. First man ever as a high school coach to be inducted in the Hall of Fame this year. He was a one of the real leaders of coaching basketball. John Wooden says on any level he may be the finest coach of the game of basketball he's ever seen, and that's quite some compliment. Kentucky has its first lead, 27-25. Cats and year old Matt Doherty, first year head coach of North Carolina. We talked about yesterday his philosophy of coaching. It's very similar. I think the foundation's the same. Secondary break, uh, man defense, multiple defenses. Uh, you know, you still think for the passer, thank, you know, point to the passer. Um, you know, the bench better be into it. Uh, still a team game. Uh, but I, I, I think I've added my own little wrinkle here and there to uh, uh, what I believe will help this team achieve its goals, and that's to uh, win the national championship. His philosophies uh, compared to Dean Smith, his That's mentor Jim, and former Jim, coach. Jim, I mentioned uh, one thing different today when he came out in that uh, layup line at the start of the game. Another thing that I think is kind of interesting, and we saw it yesterday in the practice session, he is working more in preparing for his opponent as to what do they do. Uh, the John Wooden, the, the Dean Smith philosophy was we only worry about what we, we do. do. Yeah. And I think that, that was that's a, a rather significant change in his thinking. Saw on the graphic just the second former Tar Heel player to be named the coach here, Monk McDonald, a player back in the 20s, coached in 1925, and that year only. That was successful. Okay, Prince to Hawkins. He'll take it this time. Now, Jim, here's a breakdown of a point guard. Morrison found himself all the way down on the baseline. Nobody back for defensive balance. Now, this is what the young man has got to learn. Morrison, air ball on a three. See, see, he took the shot from the corner. You see where he's standing over in the corner. He's got to realize he has a responsibility to be back on defense. Haywood so tough on the offensive glass. Hawkins with the quick shot. And Haywood strips it away, his 6th rebound. Haywood's doing the job coming back in off that bench with the two fouls. There's Morrison again. Bad decision-making on his part. Good pass by Hawkins to Smith. Bounced it in there just right. And here is where Matt Doherty said, I've got to get a guard that can show leadership, make good decisions, protect the ball, distribute the ball, and those are the four things you're looking for. Notice that he didn't say he needs to score. So Morrison has to understand to get playing time what it is his coach wants. First sticker. Base liner. Good shot. Again, nobody back on defense. Kentucky throwing right on past North Carolina, putting themselves in position for a decent shot. Carolina in the 2-3 matchup zone. Nice, solid comeback by Kentucky in this ball game. Boy, is utilizing their bench. Hawkins again, blowing by and gets fouled. No call on the foul, but the soft touch. Hawkins has made the plays on he both really ends has. of the floor. He really has. He's impressing me. He's got nine points, Billy, coming off the bench. Playing aggressive on the defensive end, too. North Carolina really confused. They're not getting in a set. See, that's one-on-one -on -one basketball. Even though it was made by an outstanding player, it's not what you want to do offensively against a team that's made a comeback like Kentucky. Forte with seven, but he's only three for ten from the field. Against a better defender like he saw against Michigan State, you don't make that shot. It only gets your team in further trouble. Beautiful pass. A stone blocked by Burstaker. Okay, a good shooter from there. Not this time, Prince. One minute to go in the half. Kentucky leads by two. 
Oh, a bad shot, Jim. Even if it goes, the bad shot. Kentucky and they've got to use the clock here. Bogans inside, some tough work for two. A lot of one-on-one -on -one action here, and players not using their head. Doherty calls a timeout, wants to set up a good shot here. 48 seconds to go in the half. Kentucky 35-31 lead. And we're back at Carolina, final minute of the first half, Billy. Well, Kentucky will see a lot of this this year, looking to try to get guys open on the perimeter with jump chops. There's a solid screen, double screen for Bogans coming off the top. So far this season, he has not been able to shoot very well from the outside. You expect that to change, but a good solid screen concept by the University of Kentucky. This has been an excellent first half comeback by this team. North Carolina has helped them out a lot with some poor decision making for the guard play. Haywood doubled up, still wants it, gets it. Good patience by Haywood in the inside, realizing he's being double teamed. Good solid move. They can shut off the shot clock. Kentucky to go to the locker room with the lead. Tubby will call timeout. This is uh, something that we saw. Remember the great run that he made to win the national championship? He loves to call that timeout right before half, set up a key play. We'll take one with him. Kentucky possession here. That pretty good brain trust, isn't it? Phil Ford, Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge, Sullivan. That's Sullivan. Other than Dave Hanners, they've got the entire staff last year right there in the corner. Dean Smith, who uh, had probably the greatest win that he had to start his career. He was in trouble at the University of North Carolina. I think, as a matter of fact, when he played this game against Kentucky at Kentucky in his second year, I think he was 10 wins, 11 losses, and he was able to upset the Adolph Rupp team. It was the first great win in that man's illustrious career. The upsetting of Kentucky. First of many. And uh, they're getting poised for a halftime presentation with Vince Carter's jersey will be push, and push off called on Smith for Carolina with 20 seconds to go in the half has a chance to tie it or take the lead of the locker room Smith said that was really weak ref and it might have been weak but we get back to the point of emphasis in regard to rough play and it was such an obvious foul that Saul Smith should have known better with the lead all he was trying to do is occupy the ball for another 15 seconds Push off again. Smith picks up another one. Boy, some His bad second. decisions here. Monday on CBS, legendary superstar Tina Turner takes the stage in her last concert tour ever. Tina, one last time live. That's Monday on CBS. Capel to the line. He'll shoot two. Struggling a little bit so far. I realize he hadn't been to the line much, so that's probably going to change. Of course, his brother Jeff was a starter at Duke, started a championship game in 94 as a freshman. It's now in the coaching ranks as an assistant to his father. father. Yep. And they play and Old against, Dominion. Right. They play against NC State today. State that has not played too well on the road against outside opponents. Trying to get it started. They had the big win against Penn State after Penn State had beaten this Kentucky team on the road. The two free throws ties it at 35. Shows you how those decisions by Smith were not good. Great catch. Estel, though, loses control and a foul called on North Carolina from behind Bird Sticker. Jamaria had, it had nothing to do with physical play, but Kentucky is, they're in the lead. Saul Smith has the ball. The worst you can do is to come out with the lead going into halftime. He makes the offensive foul, then the defensive foul. Two mental mistakes puts North Carolina right back with a chance to be Ty going out of here and only the catch saved him. That's told at the line. What a solid half he has had. Nice touch. 12 points, three rebounds. I like his touch. He was the Kentucky Gatorade High School Player of the Year. Come out of high school, offensive rebound, it was a walk. No call. Estel, Estel again, so he gets three in the final five seconds. And the visitors go to the locker room with the lead, having come back from 10 down. Kentucky showing a lot of mental toughness in this first half. 
Thought Bogans walked on the play, but Estel came right down the center of the lane. No block out, and he puts it back in. Excellent first half for that young man. 14 points for Estel. That's the end of the first half with front line, starting front line of Parker, Prince, and Stone managed all but two points. One field goal, yep. And North Carolina starts in the zone. Hubby Smith comes back with that original starting lineup. Trying to probably install, instill some confidence back into Prince and Bogans. Here's Stone, who didn't score in the first half, and put back. But Bogans, again, just like Forte, an excellent rebounding guard. Forte, quick shot. Two more. That's where he is so tough. He's got the long-range jump shot. He's got the medium pull-up, and he can take it all the way to the basket as well. Nine to Forte. Bogans, three. Good block out by Capo. Oh, yeah, and Prince behind him. To the middle. Inside Lang. Forte with the assist. Excellent hands by Lang. He really concentrated, making sure that he caught the ball first. Parker's got to become more active down inside, getting himself ready to be open to make the catch. You notice how he just plants himself and doesn't move. He's got to seal his man. Inside and trying to lob it to Parker. Loose ball. Stone after it. And he went on the floor. floor. Double zero. Now, North Carolina has an interesting thing they do in practice. When the ball goes on the floor, loose ball. All players, managers, and coaches run to that particular player. You can't do that when the game is on, but you can see how it instills guys' will to go on the floor for the ball. So the arrow goes to the Tar Heels. Here's the full court pressure. A little man to man situation. Bogan's looking to pick up. They pull back into the zone. You hear a pin drop. Just suddenly got quiet. Left hand shot. Lang. Haywood. For the two in the lead. There are not many teams in college basketball that can have two inside players of that size and that ability and that experience. So North Carolina has to take advantage of that inside power. Good two-handed rebound by Haywood. He is the all-time percentage shooter in ACC basketball history. And last year, statistically, was uh, best in the country in that area and only had uh, been beaten by one person in the history of college basketball. It was a third, by the way, on Stone. And Haywood now with 10 points, seven rebounds. And he has a good job. He did a good job not picking up that third foul in that first half. North Carolina packing back in their zone. Carolina's first lead since 25-23. Tubby Smith has gone to the bench already in regard to Stone out of there. Estel back in, who had the big first half. Pass. Right. Open shot. Yes. Three. Great pass by Estel. For the lead back by one. Prince's first points of the game. And Haywood gets another try. Oh, yes. He's just so big. Estel and Parker just no match for him down inside. Just throwing right over the top, and you can see where Parker, as I said, enlisted at 6'8", but I don't think he's that big. Matter of fact, Capel looks like he's got about an inch, maybe an inch and a half on him. This is second on Estel, who had just come in for Stone. Ball batted around out to Capel. Lang kept it alive. Kentucky had five steals in the first half. Boone, three-pointer. Got a question the shot selection. Capel slices in for two. North Carolina really hitting the boards. Tubby Smith's got to go with a timeout here. Get this lineup changed around. Get the quickness he used in the first half. Kentucky has allowed the fans to get back into the game. Ball loose. Bogans has it back. 15 on the shot clock. Slammed up. Parker. Parker's played on this court twice officially. Won the state high school championship when he was a senior at, at uh, West Charlotte. 
and then played here last year as Fork Union, and they uh, beat the North Carolina JV team. Forte, no whistle, and last touch by Carolina. That first performance by Parker here in the State 4A final was memorable. That one, it was a 38-point game. 38 points, indeed. 12 rebounds. Hawkins, first action of the second half. That's what we expected. Hawkins is the guy that really gave him the lift in that first half. Started pushing the ball up the floor. Wasn't afraid to take his jumper out front. Parker again, not this time. Skip pass. Boone, nice move. by the freshman Adam Boone. Very nice play on his part that time. Hawkins up and over. Tipped up by Estel. You know, Hawkins makes things happen, Jim. Penetrated right down the middle. Estel now 7 out of 8 from the field with 16 points to lead Kentucky. Hawkins got a piece of the arm. Kentucky picking up a lot of fouls quickly here in this uh, second half. Boone to Haywood. Some Haywood start to the second half. He has 14 for the Heels. North Carolina leads by one. The last time these teams met was in the 95 Southeast Regional Final in Birmingham, Alabama. Stackhouse led the second seed Tar Heels with 18. Wallace added 12 as North Carolina topped the number one seed Wildcats by 13 to advance to the Seattle Final Four. All right, they were a two seed at the time. You know, Jim, we talk about Final Four, the Final Four in women's soccer. It's going to take place tomorrow in the championship game. We talk about dynasties. Anson Durant's of, uh, Durant's of uh, University of North Carolina. There have been 19 women's soccer championships. He's had his team there 18 times and has won 15 of those. The only guy you think of Dan Gable's wrestling team, but you can't think of any dynasties any better than that. Incredible performance by the University of North Carolina women. And they basically made up the nucleus of the World Cup championship team and, and the Olympic team. I submit to you Dave Williams' golf program. I, Houston, I, I would... Uh, 16 national yeah, championships. I would not argue with that one. That was in a 30-year span. Of course, you're so biased. Yeah, I am. I admit that. I admit but, that. no, you're exactly right. Coach Williams really had it going. Zone again by North Carolina. Can they play some man-to-man? -man? Can either of these teams go out and really guard somebody? Early in the season to rely strictly on the zone. Nice pass. I like Hawkins. I like the way he... He's got a lot of moxie out there. Prince, yes, another one. He's knocked down a couple of threes now in this half. And he was shooting under 20% from three coming into this game, so it's important for him to keep that confidence level. Forte, open three. Long rebound to Prince. That little time Prince sat on that bench in the first half has got him back playing. Pine will do that to you. Played only 11 minutes. He's got a chance for a third three of the half. Too Put strong. Look at Estel, though. He got that rebound even though he was pushed. Let's give him another try. Tipped up by Hawkins. What an effort. Boy, he has been the guy today. 11 for Hawkins. Hawkins and Estel. The bench 16 for Estel, 11 for Hawkins. Look at the little man jump in here. Coming in, he's got a lot of moxie. This guy, <laughs> left-handed tap, terrific job. You know, I, I mentioned uh, in regard to him going to Oak Hill Academy and Jeff McGinnis. They had Rod Strick. He's not talking about backcourt players have been there. Jeff McGinnis, Rod Strickland, Corey Alexander, all guys that had uh, outstanding college careers. So if he broke their records, you know he can play. <laughs> Morrison see in action. Morrison was one for six in the first half. And 0 for one in the second. Look at Capel's dissipation. Sixth rebound for Capel. So here's Tar Heels reset. Here's where a freshman guard does get a little confused before he can get it going. He doesn't know whether he, he should be the scorer, the playmaker, the ball handler. This guy's got talent, but he's not really sure how to put it together yet. Kentucky by two. 
Forte, the first freshman ever at North Carolina to lead him in scoring, broke Bill Ford's freshman records. And you can see why. Tough pass, led Esther too much. Last touch by Kentucky. Well, Haywood couldn't get to it, so somewhat fortunate. Here's Forte, and I talked before about the guy with the range jump shot. He's got that pull-up jumper on the inside. He can take it to the hoop as well. Pretty tough to stop. He always plays under control. Only one player scored more points in last year's NCAA tournament than Forte. Is that right? Who was that? Mo Pete. Is that right? Peterson. Anderson? But he had one more game. He scored 10 points more than Forte. 105 for Mo Pete, well, the national Forte champs. Forte as a freshman, not only the ACC's freshman of the year, but he was the MVP of the South region last year. Had 28 in the regional final against Tulsa. That's the third foul called on Hawkins. Fourth team foul, Kenny, uh, or, uh, for Kentucky. Not that I mixed you up for Kevin nope. Turi. I got <laughs> Kenny and Kentucky mixed up. Here we go. It's Estel pulling it away. Estel's doing some good rebounding work in there in addition to his scoring. Nice pass. Good catch. Now Daniels in the right spot. And Kentucky leads by four. Kentucky's going to have a hard time keeping Hawkins out of this lineup. Six for Daniels. Really kind of turned the lineup uh, upside down here for Kentucky yep. today. Well, it's early, and Tubby Smith told us we're young. It's a very inexperienced team, but he said, I think we're going to be pretty good. I wouldn't disagree with it. Carson. One for eight. Yeah, misfiring long on both of his attempts this half. And Daniels held. Intentional. Yep. Yes, sir. Capel grabbed him. No question about it. Did not make a play for the ball. Grabbed him right around the waist. Like something that Julius Peppers might do if he was yeah. playing right now on the basketball team. That's right, but he's not. He's uh, trying to get caught up in his academic work. You can expect him back on this basketball team, and we'll give him a big lift because he's not only a big body, he keeps things clean on the inside. They don't like it here, but Daniels will go to the line for two, and Kentucky will have possession. I think it was a very solid call. a little upset with himself. As you said, Jimmy came in here on a torrid shooting pace. That 19 against Jackson State, Jacksonville State, 16 against Penn State, where he was 7 for 8. Free throw shooting continues to trouble Tubby Smith's team. 0 for 2 there. Near the conclusion of this game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. The Chevrolet makes the contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for 30 years. opponent beat North Carolina, UCLA. Michigan State beat them in here, so they had two losses to non-conference opponents last year. Only Temple and Iowa had done that previously. That pass. Off the hands of Capel. We've got the under-12 timeout. And the Wildcats go to that break on a 12-2 run. It was very patient, that last possession. And it led North Carolina bench, the Tar Heels starting quarterback, Ronald Curry. And Billy, it gives you a chance to talk about the combo football-basketball stars. I love to get letters on these. This is my all-time <laughs> football-basketball combination players. Charlie Ward, Heisman winner. Gonzalez, the great tight end and the outstanding basketball player. Terry Baker went to a Final Four and was a Heisman tro Trophy winner. Jesse Arnell, the great Penn State. Uh, end as well as uh, All-American basketball player and Wawa Jones who was All-American in basketball, football, and baseball at Kentucky. Of course, uh, you're going to try to slip in a guy. I do. I, I have yeah. a guy. Yeah, but he was not an All-American in the basketball but sport. Hall of Famer in football, Mike Ditka. Played it. Played it. Yep. Oh, Prince gets the soft roll. And they can go to the line here, the Cats, and lead by 10 if he converts the three-point play. Do you see the confidence picking up in this Kentucky team with the stellar play off the bench? Now, here's Prince 
who really has not been playing too well, sat down early in that first half, had a chance to watch what the other guys are doing. He's coming in with some confidence now and setting the pace, but they still are not making free throws. Well, they missed the two off the intentional foul, missed that one as well, and they're four for ten for the game. And Daniels in the lineup for Kentucky. 59-50, though. This has been a 19-point turnaround after a North Carolina 10-point lead midway first half. Well, you see the struggle for Doherty. He can't find who is going to provide that leadership at that point guard position. And when you lose a guy like Ed Cota, who handled that role so perfectly for four years, there's really nobody waiting in the wings. So he's asking freshmen to do it. And hey, against Kentucky, down 9, 11 minutes to go. Is there a freshman has enough moxie to pull this back together for him? Freshman guard with the most moxie on the floor has been Cliff Hawkins. Absolutely. Kentucky. Now you have Max Owens back in the game, an excellent perimeter shooter. Had been hampered by injuries. Good job by Bogans to make that adjustment in the zone. Down to three seconds, and there it is. A freshman not being able to recognize where he is in the shot clock. You're down to two. He's trying to make the extra pass, even if incomplete. Been no time for the shot. Monday on CBS, when the King of Queens poses for a pinup calendar, well, be happy the year is ending soon. Kevin Jenkins stars on an all-new King of Queens. And a foul away from the ball. Hold call him Capel. That's Capel, and Capel complained about the referees. Now, you see North Carolina went to the man-to-man. -man. I think it's a nice move by Matt Doherty to try to get this team moving a little bit. You sit in that zone, particularly early in the season, you lose that aggressive mentality. Capel to the bench with four. Now let's see what happens here when they go to the straight man-to-man -man in terms of Kentucky's offense. Bogans, three, 12-point lead, largest of the game for either side. A lot of time here, and here's where a freshman guard has to realize there's a lot of time in the game, not trying to get it all back so quickly. Bogans knocking down a couple of threes in this half. It Funny. has Prince Lang blocked by Estel. I don't like the lineup on the floor for North Carolina right now. Look out there. You've got Boone, you've got Owens, you've got Brooker. Three guys that you wouldn't expect to be part of a comeback. Nice cut. Prince, three. In and out. Owens had position on the rebound. 17-2 run. That could have been a huge shot, Jim. Could have been a backbreaker. Could have put him up 15. Lang at the other end instead. Knocks down two. Stay in the man, the man. Look for Bogans to get that ball in the hands. He's got Brooker on him. Here he goes. Nice. Saul Smith. Three-point shot. Gets the roll. Bogans feels it right now. He doesn't think that matchup with Brooker is something that can stop him, so he's taking it. Smith almost stole it. Tried to draw the charge then. Very uncertain is this North Carolina team right now. Every pass is like an experience. Haywood. Good rebound. Oh, what position. And he had a player all over him, so he'll go to the line for the three-point try. Now, there's a case, Jim. You've got a power player inside, makes a power move. He doesn't get blocked out, so he does the great thing. He just drops right back in here. You can see nobody blocked him out. Prince doesn't have the body to do that, so Haywood comes right back in for the easy putback. Tubby Smith recognizing that, says, I need a little more power, and here comes back with Parker. Third on Estel. Haywood has his double-double, 16 and 10. Just to trim it to 10. Hawkins returns to Kentucky's lineup. In for Smith. Haywood had the monster game against Tulsa, 7 for 11, 24 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 blocks. Just one away from the all-time uh, North Carolina record. Under nine minutes to play here at the Dean Dome. Hawkins takes boom, doesn't he? Lost control of it, though, and he's called for traveling. Got a little bit too excited. It's so interesting to watch freshman guards try to adjust mentally to how to play this game. They have physical tools, but they really don't have the experience. He would. Oh, he lost the handle. Kentucky ball. 
See if North Carolina starts picking up a little bit more, trying to put some man-to-man -man full court pressure on, or at least half court. Here comes the trap. Wise pass somehow got to Daniels. Stripped away for Tay. Old high school teammates. Brooker. Lang snares it, flips it wildly. Just think of that possession, Jim. Brooker taking a shot. North Carolina, a big advantage inside. North Carolina not looking to go inside. Look at Hawkins' pass. Daniels to the line. North Carolina in the Final Four last year. 15 in school history. Well, Jim, UCLA did have 15, and they were stripped by the NCAA, so North Carolina now in the lead, 15 to 14 there. Eric Daniels, two shots at the line. He had knee surgery on October the 10th. Missed the season opening game against St. John's, and what a boost he has given this team, uh, not only today, but uh, really every game he's played so far. Another seven-point strong effort. Had the great homecoming back to Cincinnati against Jacksonville State with 19 points. But you can tell he's going to be a major factor with this club. And Kentucky puts the pressure on. If you're North Carolina, I think, Jim, you want to go inside, inside, inside. Take advantage of that size. Not try to get it back with perimeter shooting. Lang. Now let's ask it. That's one way to get it inside, take a shot and have an offensive rebound. A lot of time on the clock. Morrison almost took it away from Hawkins. And a bit of a wild shot by the freshman. There's Hawkins making two of those kind of decisions, Jim, and putting this team right back. Hey, went over Parker. What will they call here? Huge this is a call. huge call. And it's going against Kentucky, against Parker. Well, Parker was underneath Haywood and kind of backed him on out of the shot. You'll see it right here. Forte normally hits that shot, but there's another offensive rebound. You can see that Haywood had position, and Parker tried to scoop him out from underneath. And there's where North Carolina just has dominance if they'll take advantage of it, getting that ball up around the glass to Haywood and Lang. Haywood with seven offensive rebounds, so you thought he got scooped instead of going over yeah, the back. Yeah, I huh? really did. I thought it was a kind of a clean rebound there. He's got so much size. He's up there with two hands. Nice, soft-looking shot. good game against uh, Florida. Remember in the final four, he had Very 20 solid. points, 12 Very rebounds. Solid. Ended his season there. 67-58. Kentucky had left by 13. It's down to nine. With 7.15 to go in the game, and a check foul called on Morrison. 15 foul, not a shooting situation. And Matt Doherty said, you know, put his finger up to his head, said, think out there, Brian. And that's the case. Again, we get back to these freshman mistakes. Time out on the floor, Kentucky ball when we come back. He's three-point shooting for the game, not that strong, but five of nine in the second half. Matt Doherty, by the way, kind of got back into basketball after his playing days for North Carolina, working as our runner for four years here at CBS Sports, including Final Fours and all. Stage managed a little bit for us, Billy. Ran, got some coats and popcorns at halftime, and it was kind of his... Uh, conduit back to the game. It was at that time while working as a CBS runner. He said, I missed the missed the sport, moved to Charlotte in his old high school coach, now at Davidson, gave him a job as an assistant. Bob McKillop. He'd like to be running for some cokes right now for us. I guarantee you that, the way his team's been playing here. Smith. Oh, the three drops. Or maybe he'd like you to go get him one. Again, the ball needs to go inside, inside, inside. A fadeaway jump shot. Morrison hits it. Morrison. It's amazing where you can go, though, from that runner position. You know? <laughs> That's a good one. 
Well, you know, I we think had it, one go you know, from a and, and from, it, from it, runner it, to a Masters champion. But, one week. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Freddie Couples, who has just been dislodged by the NCAA for being a runner, he's too prominent a person, so he got demoted. He can't even be a runner. Plus, he was not very good at it. Couldn't get him to move. No, they don't want to watch the game too much. <laughs> Parker back out. Smith, 6.30 to go. I tell you, I really like the way Kentucky is moving things around. They've been very patient. They're getting good shots, and they are using up time on the clock. Lang chased it down to the corner. Kentucky ball. And let's take a look, Billy, at the CBS Sportsline stat of the game, and that comes down to bench points right now. And Kentucky boosted by the play of Estill and Hawkins and Daniels. 35-7 to for complete game stats. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. Good job again by Kentucky. North Carolina got so satisfied with that zone defense, now they're not putting that pressure on in man-to-man. -man. I think it's just a part of your mentality. You've got to be able to go get guys, make them put the ball on the floor and give it up. Notice how Kentucky's able to take time off the clock. Prince. Daniels. Smart move, get it back out. Logan, soft roll. What Kentucky has also done, Jim, you don't hear a peep from this crowd. Now, North Carolina has changed the way people sit in their games. Ball goes inside. They have the student body now in a standing position, kind of like Stanford and like Duke has somewhat down under the bench. But they're going to have to learn how to get in the game even when their team is not on top because they're not providing right now any home court advantage for their club at all. It is a similar take to the sixth man at Stanford. Absolutely. Naples. It was Sam Casal who came in here and led Florida State to a big uh, win against North Carolina. They called uh, North Carolina the wine and cheese crowd. And today I'd have to say that uh, Sam Casal was on the money. Listen how quiet it is in this place. Absolutely dead inside. And the one and one opportunity slips away. Some boo birds are out. You know, you mentioned about Matt being uh, there. We see him bent over, Matt being a, a runner. He still has that level of humility. You remember yesterday talking to him about being in Dean Smith's office and Coach Smith coming through and said, Matt, would you mind if I took a few things out of here? And he said, could you imagine Coach Smith requesting, can I take some mementos here? And he said, hey, Coach, whatever you want in here is yours. And he inherited Bill Guthridge's chair. Guthridge had had a back problem. It was hard as a board wooden chair, so he eventually has replaced that. So. In time, he will beat his own man here. That was Capel fouling out, Billy. Off that missed free throw, and that's the reaction here. So Capel out of the game, finished with 12. Brooker comes back in that lineup. Certainly not a same kind of replacement. Oh, nice change. Pretty good defense. Five on the shot clock, had to force it. Pogans gets it back over Haywood. Haywood got him on the hand to the line for two. Just a great job you've got for North Carolina people standing around waiting for something to happen instead of trying to make it happen as Kentucky is. Billy, Here. your uh, your sleeper team. Well, to you make know it it's awful early, forward. but things that have impressed me, Dayton looked really good to me as a kind of team. Uh, I think Southern Cal had the injuries last year. They don't, they're looking good. Syracuse undefeated at this point. And Charlotte, and this is no longer UNC Charlotte, but this is Charlotte. They came over and pounced on North Carolina State, did the same thing to Miami. Bobby Lutz's club is going to be a factor this year. And still one more, and finally Kentucky gets a free throw. At that point, they are now, what, 7 for 14 from the foul line. Right at that same percentage they've been shooting all year. That does not hold well for them in tight games. It's been costing them games. Forte blocked by Estel. Oh, Morris's Morris quick hand saved the breakaway. But what did you see at the other end of the floor had that not been successful, Jim? Four on zero. Bad floor balance for North Carolina. They've got to go out and put pressure on the ball. Clock is now an opponent. It's Estel's fourth block of the game to go with the 17 points and eight rebounds. Nice curl move. Still back it in on Haywood. Blocked. 
Good hustle. Bogans, three. Huge oh, shot. How about huge it? moment here. Kentucky has just taken it to North Carolina. 18 for Bogans. 11 in this half. Wow. The Brooker. Just, oh, kind of amazing to take a shot from outside off the bench. It's too early to be thinking strictly threes. North Carolina's going to back in this game. They've got to go do it defensively. And Kentucky has been meeting them at every turn. Forte with the leg. And it'll be a one and one situation. We've got a doubleheader of college basketball Saturday here on CBS. Seton Hall at Illinois. And then Arizona at UConn. It all gets started next Saturday at 2 o'clock. Well, Tommy Amaker took his very young team down to Clemson and was able to pull out a win. But I tell you, playing at Illinois, which is one of the top teams in the United States, will be a very important task for that team from the Big East that uh, looks like they've got a chance to do very well this year. And hitting the front end of the one-on-one. Smith, you love the schedule coming up this year. Absolutely. I think it's... Uh, Carolina, by the way, at UCLA in a few weeks here. Yeah. UCLA struggling today against Georgia Tech. Last I saw, Paul Hewitt getting that team to maximize its performances so far in the early season. Two for two that time. Saw with a couple of big ones. It's stolen away. Reach in, call on Forte. What did Matt Doherty tell us yesterday he wants from the point guard? Yep. He wants a leadership, maintain possession of the ball, distribute the ball, and play some defense. And a guy who can bark the instructions to the rest of his teammates to tell them where they're supposed to be on the floor. Right. Morrison is just talented enough to think that he can do things one-on-one. -on -one. Doesn't realize what his role really has to be for this team. So, one-on-one. -on -one. Prince, now they're hitting the big ones. And how about what this would be for Tubby with a one and three start to the season and coming here into, uh, let's face it, you just don't steal games at the Dean Dome very often. No, you don't. You figure before the season starts, you beat Penn State at home in your opener, but you might have problems here. He does the reverse. He's found some huge coverage. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Jet Print Photo Paper. How digital images are finished. Selson Blue Shampoo to help keep your dandruff from sending the wrong signals. And by True Value, where help is just around the corner. Tubby Smith's 300th game as a head coach, Tulsa to Georgia to Kentucky. Also the assistant on the gold medal winning U.S. Olympic team last month and got into this season really kind of late, really, you think about it, Billy, not returning until October the 2nd, two months ago today, and went immediately out to recruit on October the 3rd because it was a home visiting period and uh, you know, his, he told us before the game today he was going to try to find some combos that might work. Yeah, he's a class act, an excellent basketball coach. Showing that today. He coached, down, he coached close to here in high school, at Hope County High School. And played oh, college ball uh, not that yeah. far from here at High Point, High Point College. Right. Jerry Steele. He's going to bring his old High Point team into Rupp Arena late in, uh, this month. Well, he's not doing his coach any favor there. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight on CBS, uh, Jolly Holly Christmas. Frosty the snow Snowman, Frosty Returns, and the Ice Wars. It's all tonight on CBS. Jimmy, you know, Tubby also told us, and I think this is a very smart judgment on his part, he figured when he accepted the role to be assistant coach on the Olympic team, he was going to have veteran players back. You know, Jules Kamara, who would have been here, Michael Bradley, Desmond Allison, Ryan Hogan, Myron Anthony. I mean, there are five guys that he had to anticipate would be part of this team. Not one of the five is on the squad. You see, Bradley, yeah. Bradley obviously doing very well at Villanova. You take the post, really, about two years in advance. Yeah. You commit to it. Bogans. Is that Estel again? Yes, it is. Boy, he's had a fine game. Well, Tubby committed to that role right after winning the 98 championship in San Antonio. Timeout called by Tayshawn. Nice job by Prince. This Kentucky team now pulling it together, gaining confidence with every time down the floor. Kentucky pulling away. What a day for the Cats. Every touch. An ear. It might Road to the Final Four, as we like to call it, from our first regular season game until the championship, which is four months from today. Minneapolis where the 92 Final Four was held, won by Duke. And you've got Duke, Arizona, Kansas, and Michigan State in your Final Four. You know, I've you never know been right, Jim. I'm, I'm lucky if I ever get one in any given year. You're so, you're for so those teams, picks. Yeah, yeah, but those teams you just forget about my picks. Look at this. They break. Daniels to Prince. 
I don't think I've seen a North Carolina team this flustered in a long time. They're very unsure of themselves. And Kentucky taking advantage of it. And you figured if either team would have been unsure of themselves coming into this one, it would have had to have been Kentucky more so than North Carolina. Lang retrieves, put back. That's where North Carolina has had a big advantage and just didn't take advantage of it when there was 10 minutes to go on the clock. Timeout, Carolina still down 18. I'm with the NFL today. Big steal by Forte, can't deliver. And Smith steals it away from Brooker. Again, Saul Smith has to realize now, clock is a friend, just get it over half court. Boone fouls, doesn't move the feet, reaches out with the hands, easy call. Jim, today, North Carolina started out with a, you know, a good lead. Looked like they were in control of the game. Kentucky, we talked about that first half comeback. The last time that Adolph Rupp and Dean Smith met, North Carolina pulled off to a 15 to nothing lead in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Kentucky came back and won that one, 94-87. Dan Issel with 41 points that particular game. And I read a story about the game. I said the night before, I can imagine this happening this day and age. Coach Rupp invited Dean Smith up to his um, uh, hotel room, and they What's talked that? basketball and strategy for an hour and a half the day before the big game. Uh, that I don't doesn't think that, happen too much I don't much think that happens days. too much in this day and age. Saul Smith with some big free throws. Of course, they were both disciples of Fog Allen that had played under the great Coach Allen at Kansas. So maybe that was the bond. Good steal, Estel again. Boy, he is having an all-around game. Good hands. Really like him as a player. Nice to have a guy like Prince out there to catch the ball. He's he's like a seven-footer when you take into consideration the reach that he has in his arms. So it's an easy target to throw to. Lob. Oh, no, Bogans couldn't hold it. Stripped away by Brooker underneath. They oh, won the got line. a piece of that. That was a great pass. And Keith was up there. He just couldn't put it away. I think it was maybe a little bit too easy for him. You've often said, Billy, that when you get to the NCAA tournament, teams you like are teams that can play eight players that are really solid eight deep yep. total. And you look at Kentucky with Daniels, Estel, and Hawkins, that gives them eight players. Here we, you know, here we have a situation, and, you know, I think that the, Tubby Smith will get down to what eight it is, and I think today was an indication of the guys that are going to become more vital and pivotal to this team. Now, they're just changing the shot clock around. They had it at 35, dropped it down to 33. Got a timeout to call. And Bogans calls it. And Tubby Smith saying to Daniels, all you had to do with those picks was just slide down inside and you had a layup. Well, we can already announce the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Estel from Kentucky, Haywood from North Carolina. Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic, academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Only the second visit ever to Chapel Hill by Kentucky. The last and only other time they were here was 10 years ago this week. The coaches were Smith and Patino. Today it's Smith and Doherty, Tubby Smith. Matt Doherty. Jim, I know you Carolina won that one, 84-81. You did a lot of research looking back into those kind of things. The funniest research that I did in Kentucky is that each player was asked in their media guide, who is the best player you ever played against? And there, there were actually eight votes that were cast, uh, eight different people. Michael Jordan got two votes, which is really uh, amazing. The guy that tied him, Sam Masiello. Steve, Steve Mas Masiello. Steve Masiello. Steve People say, well, who was he? Well, he played at Kentucky last year. Yep. He was 0 for 12 for the season, I believe. Well, he was a part of that team. And well, so, I mean, on the championship team. Oh, so you're making a case for I'm him. Give I mean, him come on, two. Michael I mean, Jordan. Steve's out there Steve watching. Steve Masiello. Come on, please. I can't I help it if they haven't had a chance to play against Michael Jordan. Oh, the rest of these no, guys. No, no, what I'm saying. Two picked him, and that, that, that <laughs> impressed me. <laughs> We're talking about guys you actually played against. Doesn't say much for guys like uh, Mashburn and others that played in Kentucky. Prince. Do you think that, that was done tongue-in-cheek? I think a little bit. possibly. 
Well, Masiyama had a lot of, uh, you know, connections. He used to be a ball boy up at the National nice Square Garden. Bob Steve, I make a case for myself. I didn't get enough playing time. He needed Bob, some I mean, more playing time. The that. team was deep. <laughs> Under two minutes to go. Kentucky You're too nice high, a guy. by 22. <laughs> Rooker blocks oh, by Prince. There's that seven-foot span of Prince. Wingspan. Yep. Good pass. Saw a graphic a moment ago that Kentucky hasn't beaten North Carolina since 1974. That was seven matchups ago, and in that game, Jimmy Dan Connor led the way with 35 for Kentucky. Next year, he led his club to the Final Four, losing to UCLA in Coach Wooden's last game. Sunday on 60 Minutes, a police officer who blew his career by blowing the whistle on dishonest cops. That's Sunday on 60 Minutes. Now listen, Billy, we've talked about the Final Four being four months out. Why don't you project, I know it's only one performance here, but I don't think anybody saw this kind of performance by Kentucky coming in here today. What do you think these two teams have, where they will be come March? What do, well, you, what do you think? I'll say this, that both of them will be a lot better than they were today, and that's not taking anything away from Kentucky's performance, which I think was really outstanding, particularly when we talked to their head coach right before the game, and he said he was uncertain as to what they were going to do. I think that Kentucky will be a tough out as this season goes on. It's such a young team, but uh, with confidence, they'll be a lot better. And you can't imagine North Carolina playing a poorer game than this at any time of the rest of the season. So they'll get their point guard situation settled, and when they do, you can expect them to be an explosive team with the power they've got inside and a guy like Forte on the outside. Forte left open. Forte, the same kind of performance as his last uh, game at home. 38, where he set the Smith Center scoring record, breaking Lionel Simmons of LaSalle's 37 mark for back in 88. He's doing work with Gene Cady and Larry Brown and Rudy Tomjanovich. He's always in the learning process, despite all the success that he's had. And he has to be really excited inside today. I mean, his club coming off. The two tough losses in New York in which they could have won both of those basketball games, then that upset by Penn State. Penn State ending their 20-game win streak at Rupp. All close losses, St. John's, UCLA, and Penn State. And shooting 55% for the foul line, when you have close losses, you know how tight they were. Forte, who has 13, now has 16. And another timeout called by Doherty and Carolina. Yeah, the player that was being recruited by Coach Smith ended up going to North Carolina State, Harold Thompson. Third all-time in assists. Now ninth. Uh, pretty good for a guy who's playing forward position, including leading his team in assists the last two years. Another one of his teammates, his freshman year, talking about Dory's freshman year, is here today, Al Wood. Al Wood here today. Serge Vicker was here today. And, of course, uh, Vince Carter here today as well. As well. Fitch doubled up. Tries to get it out of that traffic. Not very good floor balance here, but Tubby Smith using the entire bench. Stone, who was very silent as a starter, comes off to put that one away. His first two points of the game. The sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama, home of Gladys Ivey, the mother of athletic director Larry Ivey. Her birthday, we wish her a happy birthday. And Booker scores on the inside. 27 seconds to go, and still a comfortable, comfortable Kentucky lead here. Now, and you probably uh, wonder why, why Doherty's calling the timeouts. This is just a little lecture time. Biggest loss ever for North Carolina at the Smith Center, 20 points. Duke defeating him by 20 in 1999. And the lead right now for the Wildcats is 18. Eisenbuttle has come in, number 15 for the Cats. Fitch returning. J.P. Blevins with the ball. Corey Sears, number 33, also in. So everyone seeing action for Kentucky. Forte and Lang still on the floor. They started in this basketball game. The only two starters still out there. Stone out there. He was one of the starters for Kentucky in this ball game as well. He's got very little playing time today. Wasn't very productive in that first half. And Tubby Smith made the moves. There he is. Two field goals in a row. And those only field goals of the game. Right. They come here in the last minute. 
You know, Jim, you were talking about, you know, Al Wood being here in Doherty. You know, one of the things about Doherty, he was an excellent passer. And when he graduated, he became only the second player in ACC history, Walter Davis the first, to have 1,000 points, 400 rebounds, and 400 assists. You never think of him as a great player, but that's quite a record. I remember Al Wood in that championship game at Fall Echo. 420 with a three, and that will prevent uh, Kentucky from matching Duke's defeat of the Tar Heels by 20. An unexpected, brilliant performance by the Kentucky Wildcats, who were down 10 early. They have won at North Carolina, 93-76.